2019's Klaus is a Santa Claus origin story featuring a postman Jasper who is punished for his poor performance at his father's postal academy by banishment to an island named Smearinsburg, where he is being imposed with the task of establishing an operational postal service on the island. However, he is faced with two despicable clans who share a common trait with each other to uphold tradition. This is tradition. Centuries of glorious hatred. Passed down through generations! Jasper meets a toy maker who is detached from the rest of the people on the island, and they seek to work together and anonymously reward children with gifts all over Smearinsburg and emerging the later famous and iconic Santa Claus. <laughs> Before we explore how Klaus utilizes colour and light, we first need to identify the theory behind colour and light itself and how it also affects the narrative and the mood in the film and ultimately influencing the way the audience might interpret that style. Often, colour and light may act as a technique of conveying symbolic themes through characters and setting. Colour can represent personality traits or light may depict emotion or foreshadowing events later on. Uh, both of which will become very notable in Klaus. Colour does not always need to reflect the characters, however. Additionally, colour can also reflect the environment around the characters and provide your audience with more background knowledge of the setting. Take the film Joker as an example. In the film, there is a scene featuring Arthur journeying home on a tram moments after losing his job. The sickly green filtered setting, along with the troublesome group of men down the carriage, gives us the insight that the society that they live in feels very neglectful and it's very villainous from its off-putting and sickly setting, it's reinforced by the group of men who are demonstrated as the antagonists of that scene. The sickly green colour grading additionally makes the audience feel more anxious and uneasy about the group of men and in disgust of the environment itself. Corresponding with Jasper's personality in a scene like this, where he's struggling to find letters from mailboxes. The environment around him, like the Joker, is also sickly green. The symbolism of the scene is quite crucial to the storyline, as the light and the colour of the setting reflects Jasper's current personality status. His impatience and entitlement influences the environment around him with his consistent complaining and moaning. Uh, all right, all right. What's going on here? Where are all the letters? It's daylight, but it feels sickly. There is sunlight, but something is off with the colors, and it doesn't feel like it's a pleasant kind of like right. it's midday, but it's not pleasant. Mm -hmm. No letters? Jasper's intentions are for the wrong reasons. He only wants the letters to suffice his own selfishness and separate himself from those less fortunate than him, almost characterizing him as this villain. His story arc is about his journey from an anti-hero to a hero, and later in Klaus, another scene adopts the style midway through, where the two clan leaders join and conspire against Jasper and Klaus. Looks like someone might need help mailing letters. Yeah! Here, the same sickly green colour grade is shown to convey the similar villainous theme, again corresponding with Jasper's initial selfish and anti-hero morals. The clan leaders also shared their mischievous and hostile intentions to overthrow Jasper and Klaus's influence over Smearinsburg. Director Sergio Pablo also makes an interesting analysis of the intentional pattern of colour that he was slowly developing throughout Klaus. There's a gradual progression of colour altered by the behaviour of light with it. For instance, when Jasper arrives in Smearinsburg, we immediately descend into a dull and desaturated grey colour palette to portray the town as an unsettling and forsaken burden that Jasper will need to tackle. But then we had to gradually bring in the light. Every movie has a colour bible. It helps us to see the progression. A small thumbnail from every sequence or two just to see how it evolved. It's at this point of which the audience are presented with everything at once to establish everything about the town, the people, the frigid cold weather, and most importantly, the two rival antagonistic clans of the town. The beginning of the movie is very moody and it's mostly overcast. The color palette is very limited. The message is very strong. The place is desolated, you know, people are not happy. It's as if Klaus was deliberately separating itself from the general idea of what makes a Christmas film. The film's approach appears very anti-traditional in comparison to many other Christmas films, which strive for consistently warm and vibrant colors to imply the festive and seasonal atmosphere throughout the entire length of the film. Whereas in Klaus, the colour palette is muted from Jasper's arrival to Smearinsburg, but begin to saturate when the characters' morals improve 
as that is the entire message in Klaus, ensuring that we analyze ourselves and develop important and good morals. In fact, the character Klaus enforces this narrative with his iconic phrase during the film, of which is repeated by Jasper towards the end. A true selfless act always sparks another. Pablo adds how their intentions for a great color palette for Smearinsburg was designed to make the audience feel where everything feels like this place is the worst, right? But then we had to gradually bring in the light. It needs to be daylight, but it cannot be sunny, warm daylight. At this point of the film, Jasper's initial personality traits define the environment around him. He does not care for anybody other than himself, and he is blinded by his own arrogance. The inclusion of the sickly green daylight setting reinforces Pablo's intentions for a slow progression of colour and light. Jesper is keen and ambitious to collect the letters, improving his work ethic and independence, but he's still very impatient and manipulative, like when he attempts to manipulate a young boy to toss him a penny to mail his drawing back to him. In contrast, we are journeyed through a sequence of very minor adjustments to the environment's colour grading and light. As the film progresses, Jasper and Klaus continue to give the children of Smearinsburg with presents, influencing their behaviour to change for the better, as they begin to develop good morals by helping each other, and inevitably influencing the adults as well. As this occurs, we see the inception of colours regaining their vibrance, and the light gradually brightening up Smearinsburg, from its initial depressive and dimmed foggy state to a clear and bright setting. For example, in this scene, as the children are spreading their influence of kindness, two neighbours who originally despised each other began to hesitantly gift each other. There are two stages where light dictates the mood here. At first greeting, the neighbours appear in a much more vibrant setting, but their faces are still low lit and avoid appearing in the light, signifying that they are still holding a grudge against one another. However, stage 2 reveals a later scene where the neighbours are presented bonding at each other's home, now present in full open light, implying the signs of forgiveness and new beginnings with each other. A similar example occurs when one of the other neighbours decides to knock down his fence and build a slide for the other neighbour's children to play on with his own, providing this sense of unity. Where beforehand, as he walks over to the fence, there is a sharp border between the shadow and the light, suggesting the literality of good and evil. The neighbour is shown to walk out from the shadow and into the light, demonstrating that he has chosen the path of goodwill. These scenes directly symbolise the literal transformation of the town folk as they switch from evil to good. In conclusion to Pablo's pattern by slowly implementing the light and vibrance of the colours, we can identify the psychological process behind the transformation of personalities through the characters in the town folk. Often we would associate colour with life as opposed to the lifeless black and white. The gradual progression of the colour and the light feeding life back into the town was also representative of how life was reinstated in everybody's personalities and became much more friendlier with each other. Overall, the colour and light were very symbolic of their attitudes towards each other. At the beginning, grey represented resentment and towards the end, the vibrance represented bond.